we seem to have technical difficulties. Hang on. Blah blah blah. Oh shit. <laughs> By the way, is it okay if I have the in-game timer on? Like, there's a timer in the game that I can watch. Like, it's for references and stuff. Uh, yeah, I guess. All right. Hello, everyone. This is. It'll do. A nice little adventure puzzle game made by a local studio here in Skövde. So this game, a lot of people think when they see this game, they say, oh, Zelda ripoff, cool. And I'm not gonna blame you. It is very like, um, it's a, I often call it a mix between A Link to the Past and Goof Troop for Super Nintendo. Because it's like top down hit things with swords and block puzzles. That's the whole game. Um, so yeah, this game consists of collecting items of sorts. And to complete the game you need two out of three available items on the island. The three items are the portal wand, the fire sword, and the ice wand. Now this is 100%, so we're gonna collect all the items all the heart pieces and all the fluff collectibles in the game, so you're gonna get to see most things. Now, I'm gonna run around this castle, meet some interesting people, hit some chests, collect money so I can buy these items of the item merchant. And uh, the first part of the game is pretty much the 90% route, which I'm sure everyone watching is, watching is familiar with. So we're gonna start with the portal wand. So here's the item merchant. He's called Item Carver. And he carved this whole item with his bare hands. Especially the swordfish. Uh, so he doesn't actually have the items. He says he does and then he, we buy it from him and he sends us to the place where the item is. And these are basically dungeons. So this is the portal wand dungeon, which is the first one. Um. So you go a bit through the dungeons and you're gonna get the item eventually and then you're gonna start facing puzzles that are based on the item. Now you can collect any of these for any percent or like complete in the game in general. You can collect any of these items in any order and you can you only need two of them to complete the game which makes this a very open-ended game because depending on which items you collect in which order you will go through the main castle in, you can go through it in many, many, many different routes. Which made this game very fun to route, like, speedrun-wise, to find out more route. Now I'm, I'm just talking and doing these puzzles by autopilot, so... Yeah, that's a thing. Okay. Yeah, so we're gonna come up on the first boss here soon. Every dungeon has a boss that is often weak to its own magic. So we're gonna utilize that, and 228 here is fine. So now we're gonna meet the deer Jenny. All these enemies, the, the, the like humanoids or whatever, are called Jennys. And she's extremely magic right now. And this boss is pretty boring, to be honest. You just wait a lot. Because you have to. So this is how the portal one works. You place a block. You shoot a thing, and the thing is teleported to the block. So you basically place a block behind her, shoot her thing, and watch her get damaged by the thing. And then you wait. So we're just gonna wait. Yeah. Uh, so for the end of this fight, I'm gonna exit through the lower door there, or the lower stone pillar. 
So for the, le the very last shot, which is coming up, I want her to shoot left, right, or down, because then I can stand by the door. If he shoot if he shoots up, I have to stand by her, which loses about two seconds, or whatever. Okay, she shoots right, which is fine. Oh no, I'm screwing it up. Though. Never mind. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, perfect. RNG manipulation. It's fine. Uh, so here we get a chest, which is a heart piece. So the main difference between any percent and 100% for the first half of the game is that I'm gonna collect stuff on the way back to the castle. Uh, after every dungeon there are four items to collect, I think. Um, which are... I think we're gonna collect the first card here, which is like an arbitrary collectible. Um, so far I've only been collecting money and heart pieces, but this is a card. Which is just for fun. There's 26 of these lying around this world. So we're gonna walk around here a bit and find all of them that's in this area. You know, take damage from this guy, because whatever. Um, so yeah, I've been saying things randomly. I don't remember what I was, what I've said so far. Uh, but yeah, this game has oh, shit. this game has a somewhat active community that has gotten recently. For a while, it was only me and another guy, but then some French people found it, and now it's like there's uh, probably like between five and ten active runners of the game, as, at least any percent. Some people are starting going into 100%, but so far I'm me and another guy called HVQOI. I don't know how to pronounce that. Are the only ones who's actually done runs of it. And he's gotten pretty good time so far. He might beat my run soon. So here we're gonna encounter the first time I'm using the retry room button, which is basically I can read when I've taken a chest, like the game recognizes that I've you've taken the item, you can't retake it. So if I retry the room, I get placed back at the beginning of it, uh, which saves some time because it's faster. Where is he? There. Uh, it's faster to get teleported there than it is to walk there. Um, oh, we use in-game time for this game. Because it measures the time accurately and it's easy to use. Uh, it doesn't measure the time accurately in a real-time sense. It doesn't measure like text, uh, like in cutscenes or whatever. And it doesn't measure like, yeah, things like this. But we don't really care. It's just mash time anyway, so whatever. There are timer glitches, which has made us consider alternatives, like real time, for example. Uh, but we've just decided to go with uh, using in game time, but also having a video for your run. Oh shit, wrong way. Oops. Not supposed to go there yet. Gotta go this way first. Killing these guys to unlock this door. Obvious. Uh, am I going the right way? Yes, I'm going the right way. <laughs> I'm confusing myself by talking. Okay, so these stone guys are pretty hard to kill at this point. The only way to do it is by teleporting them, uh, placing a teleport block beneath them and making them fly off. So here we retry room again to go here. This is one of the more dangerous rooms in the whole run. These axes that these guys throw do like one half health, one half heart of damage. And dying is annoying. So I want to avoid them at all costs. I entered here with more than one half health, so I'm, I should be pretty good. Also that dropped the heart, so I'm fine. Five second rule. Nope. Nope. I am all I also haven't slept in about twenty-four hours, so I Oops, yeah. As said, I also haven't slept in about twenty-four hours, so I'm probably gonna make some silly mistakes. Um Okay. Okay. 
it's to the point where I actually not I'm, I'm not exactly autopiloting piloting right now. I actually have to think. Ugh. It's annoying. Um. So yeah, let's see what, what I want. I I had planned things to talk about during this game, but I've forgotten them all. So yeah. And as said, I don't remember what I've said so far. <laughs> Mm, so, uh, yes, this way. <laughs> now we're gonna collect the sec second item. Uh, now he has the raft here as well. So the our goal with the game is we we came to this island. We're like shipwrecked at this on this island, and we want to get off it. So this guy says that well, all we need to do is get into his fortress or whatever, uh, kill the final boss, and get his artifacts, and uh, he can build us build a raft for us. Which is nice of him. But we haven't done that yet, so we can't get it yet. Mm, yes. Um, so, you need, as I said, you need two items to finish the game. And we are gonna go kill the final boss when we have acquired two items, because... The final boss in this game has... Damn it. This is... This is inconsistent for some reason. You should that should happen every time, but it doesn't. It stopped doing it a while ago. Anywho, the the, the final boss in this game has a bunch of different faces, and the more items you have, or depending on what items you have, he has different faces. If you have all items, he's gonna have all of his faces, which is slow. So we're gonna get these two items first, and then kill the boss. And then get the third item, and then do like clean up and stuff. So there's three three dungeons, and the main castle. Then there's also the master dungeon, which can only be accessed after you've uh, gotten all items. And we're gonna do that because there are chests in there, and 100% is defined by collecting all chests. So we're gonna do that later. It has a very interesting boss in it as well. I'm not gonna see any more than that. Not that the other bosses in this game aren't interesting. We've only seen Deer Gen so far though. But the second one is coming up now. So here we have her. Delicious turnip. The Lich's turnip. <laughs> Pons. So this one is another case where hurting him with his own, hurting her or something with your own mag ma magic is the thing. Stop it. Whatever. Actually, I only have a quarter health now. That is very risky. Oh, one. Yes, I'm screwing this up. I'm gonna play it very safe here and at least try to. Fine. Whenever you pick up a hard pickup in this game, you get full health, as in another game that has hard pickups. So, yeah, two hearts. Now we're pretty much immortal. And so, we're gonna do some more like item collection in between here and the fortress, and this guy's a troll. And these rooms are the worst, they're 100% RNG. These guys can only be hit in the back, they have very weird hitboxes though. And this room is just, they just walk around randomly and I think my, the best I've ever gotten here, I got like three tri like three double kills and a triple kill and it was insane. And now this was average. Sometimes they just walk around and I miss them all and they hit me back and it's just horrible. But that was fine. It's fine. It's all fine. So more walking. Walking is fun. Yeah, go ahead. All right, we have another nineteen dollars from Maxi the Hatter. Hello again, sing along. Hi. Let's Hi. make this happen. And we still need fifty dollars for that one, so bring him in quickly. This room is another horribly RNG one. You're at the mercy of how those guys decide to walk at the beginning. Two tries, I would say average, but still pretty bad. 
Also, I'm not playing with my own keyboard because it decided to not work today. Which is a bit annoying, but whatever. Uh, oh yeah, I haven't, like, the stick, oops. The stick that you have right now can be lit on fire, which you, if you paid any attention, oops. You might have noticed. This is gonna be, like, I'm gonna get a fire sword eventually, which is, makes the stick into a sword that's on fire. So that's not gonna be a thing later. Okay. More cards and stuff. Oops. Hmm, so yeah. This game is a very... I'd say it's a very fun casual playthrough because of how open-ended it is. So I definitely rec recommend anyone interested and remotely interested in this to try and try it. It's like even after seeing me play it, it's, it shouldn't be like spoiled at all. First of all, it has a very good sense of humor, and I'm just skipping through all of that, not reading signs, skipping through dialogue. And it's also, as I s I've already said several times, very open-ended. So speaking of using in-game time, there are... There have been some timer glitches found in this game, which makes it possible to complete the game with zero on the timer. Uh, oops. Um, and that has screwed up the Steam leaderboards a bit, because there are Steam leaderboards in this game for um, some categories, not this one. But the devs have made an active attempt to like fix the leaderboards and work on the bugs, so that's nice. Still not resolved though. Looking at you, Ludosity. Yeah, no. So now we have two of the items, and we're gonna collect the money required for the third item before we go to the final boss. But we're not gonna get the third item before we kill the boss, as I explained earlier. Okay. Killing things, putting in things, beats the things. Open the door before I open the chest here, it saves about half a second. Good times. Um, so, when you're playing this for the first time, it might not be obvious that you need to kill these enemies to open that door, or do these things to open that door, but in this game, if you hit uh, like a door or a piece of something that blocks your way, it shows you what you need to do to activate it. Like if I were to hit the door to the right here, it would show me three lines to those three buttons that I just pressed. And this, the entrance. This is the ent one of the en one of the three entrances to the final boss. There is one for every item combination. And this is the entrance for the fire. Oops. Fire ice combination I think which is not the combination I have but that's fine we don't really care Oops. Uh, I don't really know who found this like how to do this it's a bit tricky but it works so that's nice this is so far it's basically the 90% route except like extra collection collecting extra stuff for 100% but after we've killed this guy, we're gonna do start with like the exclusive 100% stuff. I also have half a health here. That's not good. Be nice. He's not nice. Usually I would. Oops. Damn it. Usually I would uh, block these when these when the old old men or whatever. On. I can stand in the position they're gonna land and uh, by doing that by doing that like despawn them I'm gonna do it right here but because he moved in the way he did I couldn't do it reliably did he not die 
Is he serious? Wow, okay, sorry guys. He's screwing up. Um, there's a way to crash the game on this boss, by the way. Uh, we didn't really know how until... How or why, until about two weeks ago when a guy a runner uh, called Psychosis figured it out. So now we know how to prevent it. It has something to do with... Uh, despawning enemies that don't, that hasn't actually like gotten assigned a sprite yet or something like that. And it screws you up and when you open the chest that he's gonna drop, it crashes the game. I'm just going to announce that we have met the goal for the Mystica Ninja Sterengom and Impact theme song. Oh so nice. So well on chat. Impact Thank you for the name. It's the best. Whatever, gorgeous. There's a preview for you guys. Best song in any game ever, by the way. Damage boosting for that, like boosting damage. Taking damage for that thing is the fastest way. Screw killing. Why kill when you can take damage, I guess? So now we're gonna get the final item. We could technically get the raft trade right now and complete the game. It'd be a shitty any percent at this point. But we're gonna keep playing. Because this game is nice. So this dungeon... Oh yeah, I forgot one thing. Dungeons have... Or there's a lot of shortcuts in this game that are intentionally made, put into the game. The game is somewhat designed around speedrunning. Which is pretty cool, like about around like routing and exploring and finding out fast the fastest way to do things. So this game has things put out that are called professional shortcuts. Um, so I skip a lot of the dungeons by doing these. They're basically hard, really hard puzzles that actually took me quite a while to figure out the first time. Oops. Kill the old man. Who cares? Um. So yeah, this uh, you skip a lot of the dungeons to, when you do the professional shortcuts, but it's faster, so yeah. Okay, Let's see if I can hit this cycle, and yeah. So third boss coming up, the Masked Ruby. And he says something funny here in the beginning, so I'm gonna let you read that chat, because all of you are Swedish, right? Ha ha ha. Do you even know what that means? Nope. Neither do I. Let's fight. I love that. So basically, this guy, if you hit him, you stun him. You need to light this tree, place a bomb. A bomb comes up, and you just lure him to it. Quite easy fight, but also only has two faces. Oops. Most the other boss fights in this game have three faces, while the ones that do have faces. This one has two, because... I don't know. So yeah, stuff. Now after the other dungeons, I've collected all the items uh, on the way back to the castle, but here we're only gonna collect one. Because we are gonna come back here later and we're gonna have all the items at that point. So they're faster to do on the way back with all the items. Because this is where the master dungeon is located. Even. Yeah, no, wait. Yeah, master cave, whatever. Dungeon cave. What is even the distance? Don't be a troll. He was troll. Okay, down we go. So now we are gonna do cleanup basically. We have all the items, so now we can go right ro roaming through the castle, getting all the items, getting all well, all the hearts, heart containers, and uh, things, cards. That's the thing. Twenty hours of sleep, hopefully no sleep. How about make you that raft? Mm -hmm. 
So this is the portal garden. Whenever you collect a chest in the main, uh, a money chest in the main castle, portal is placed there. Very convenient. And I've used it previously in the rooms. So you've seen it before. Light that up. Open this. Left. So here is a map upgrade, which is nice. If you want to watch the map, which is very useful in the casual play for this game, but yeah. Please, yes, okay. Thank you. I'm gonna freeze that guy. The cactuses are really annoying to kill if you don't have the freeze. They take several hits and they jump around and they shoot spikes at you and bless. Oops. So yeah. More fossil clothing, even out. Collect the hoops. Good. Hold on. There we go. Okay. Confusing myself. I'm freeze that, get that, things, more hard things do I have. I'm probably gonna I'm like surely gonna forget something. It's gonna be like a 99% run. I did I did I've done it twice in practice the last couple of days. I come to the end and I realize I don't have all the hard pieces pieces or something. So yeah more clean up. We're going through the rest of the castle now, collecting everything. Um, let's place something there. See, the wall is broken there. So I'm gonna blow it up. Also, enemies spray confetti when they die, which is nice. Also, kill this guy for fun. Is that what we do? There's a little story or something on the wall. Untextured room for some reason. I'm not blowing up walls. So yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if there's something else to actually like talk about. I thought about this before. Like when I was I was trying to plan out what to say about this game, but I realized that there like once you've explained the gist of the game, how the game, how it lets you progress and stuff. Not that much more to say actually. It's just me solving a bunch of puzzles and killing a bunch of jennies. Oop. Don't wanna have that pancake eat all these bombs. Because pancakes eat bombs. That's bad. And I can do this. Okay. Uh yes. Pushing blocks, left, right, up, down, something. The blueberry Jenny, she shocks me with electricity. I don't mind because she's so adorable. Another map upgrade. Only reason I get them is because they're included in the definition of 100%. Okay, so I did something wrong here. But I'm not gonna say what, you'll never know. Perfect execution. Mm. So this is made by a local game studio called Ludosity. Uh, local to Kvde here. Where we have this marathon. And uh, they are very cool. They make cool games. Oops. Uh, so yeah. I think I, I'm thinking about if I've collected everything and I should have. I'm gonna get two heart pieces here I think so that should be fine. I mean, I've spent quite a couple of hours playing this game, so it should be in my muscle memory by now, but it isn't, so yeah. And I always screw this room up somehow. So far, so good. I've like spent more time practicing this room than probably any other room in the game for some 
unknown reason. It's these series of like inputs and doing things. Okay, I got it. Good. They always screw me up somehow. There aren't really any glitches or anything in this game that help with speedrunning at least. There's glitches, that's for sure. But yeah, they don't really help in the country. There's like a little bit of animation cancelling from time to time, that's just very small stuff. Um, but it's nothing, it's just execution and proper routing. So, cool thing. And the fourth one is gonna teleport me, so yeah, nice. Let's see, 24, 37. I think that's pretty good. So now we're gonna go back to the tu tutorial cave because there is one card hidden here. Actually, I did like a couple of 100% runs um, of this game without realizing that there was a card here. So, yeah, 99% runs are the best. This is my favorite card, the apathetic frog. What's the, <laughs> what's the use? Sometimes I have to ask myself that question. <laughs> so we're going back to the toy arcade. Flashback, blast from the past. Also, I can see chef. Hello, chef. How are you? So now we're coming back to the fire, fire sword forest part or whatever. And now we're gonna do the things, the like collectibles we skipped earlier, because they're way faster to do with all the items. Except for maybe this one, but it's a little bit faster at least. So you can do stuff like that. Bomberman uh, reference, by the way. For anyone that didn't ca ca catch that. More retry room. Oops. Oh, shit. No! Now the heart is sad. Screw you. So here, this should be the last heart piece, which will give us all four hearts, which is how many you have in this game. That was a pretty good room. They're pretty random, they just run around. Oh, the heart is glad again. Yay. It's gonna be even happier now. See? Okay, this guy's trolley. Yeah, he's trolley. Those are fish buns, by the way. They're the best. Not mud kits, as several people have pointed out that they look like. That was a fish bun card, the best card. I after uh, apathetic frog, of course. I don't know, maybe. Fish buns are pretty cool. Pancakes. I haven't really talked at all about the enemies in the game, but they're. Pretty generic enemies. This one walks randomly, this one interacts with the bombs. Try room. So that's the last collectible in the open world, so to say. Now we are heading to the master cave, which is filled with really hard puzzles. Me and a friend spent like, I think we spent five hours on the 12 puzzles in this dungeon, which was really fun, but also really annoying at times. So that was the first one. This is going fast, but yeah. Speed gaming, serious business. I mean, I, th I think I spent an hour on this one alone. I just could not figure out what to do here. You cannot make a block. Stay on that orange button, it's impossible. But you have to buffer the blocks by using your own blocks. Ah, oh, genius. See? Like so. Voila. 
And here they try to fool you by using bombs as bait. Because you just want to blow them up, but no, you have to use them. To solve the puzzles. So far, so far this has been a pretty good run, actually. Room. Here's the first collectible in the master dungeon, it's just another card. I think it's item cover. No, it's it'll do. Oh no. Oops. There we go. Do that, do this. And do that, do this, do things. Hit that, move that. Get that block up there. Shoot this wall for some reason. Do that again. And the door opens. Way. Puzzles, uh, right. A lot of these tough puzzles are timing based, which timing based, which make them really hard to grasp at first. But when you like get it, you start to realize. Um, oops, fuck! I screw that up. I have to wait now, because if I do this wrong now, I'll teleport a thing and things will happen. Sorry. There we go. Easy. Push the block into the block thing, which makes it teleport to the thing and slide down. Okay, that was... Eh. Whatever. Now we're halfway through the master cave. Yay. And I get a card with Tipsy. The fox. Flying fox fairy who gives us tips and also drinks a lot. And we have a two dollar donation from Melis. Ooh. Oh man, I'm so glad I didn't miss your run. Good luck, can't wait for cube. Heart. Hi Melis, thank you. I can't wait for cube either. Get that shit over with. <laughs> uh, cube height. More retry room abuse. It's really helpful. This room is probably the one I had the most trouble with in the Mastery Cave because I just could not figure out how to properly use that dude to help me out. Like, took me, I think we probably spent about one and a half to two hours in this room. It seems so trivial now when I can just like do it in 10 seconds. But believe me, this took way too long time. Remove that. Block. Pew. Pew. Like here, I in this room I didn't want to blow up the ice block with the bomb, because there's no other place in the game where you uh, place a bomb, bomb next to an ice block, but turns out you can't blow up ice blocks with bombs. So we spent like a good th 20 minutes thinking this puzzle was un unsolvable. This one is oh, heavily timing based, but I've already screwed it up, so whatever. Oops. What is the current go. record for this game? Um, 100% is... 34, uh, well let, let's just say the, the current faster recorded run is 34.23. In-game in in time, oops, see daisies. That's the thing, no that's fine, it's not your fault, it's me being dumb. Yeah, that's in-game time. So here you have to make a Ice Wand projectile and a Portal projectile hit each other in between those two mirrors. Which also took a while to figure out how to do correctly. Oh no, 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 I... Oh, oof, that was so close. I'm screwing up. Uh, 
I've never managed to get this room into my like muscle memory. It's just, it's just too much to think about. This is the last puzzle of the dungeon. If you make one like wrong thing here, you have to restart the whole room. One wrong move, so to say. Oh, what am I doing? Oh, I'm doing it correctly. Yeah, the right thing. Okay, so up we go. There, take that. Put this out here. Place that. Doing things in the right order, or else I have to restart this room. But now we're done. And actual final boss hype. This is really cool. I like this boss a lot. It's a fish bun. Or wait, is it inside a cave lightning? It's the ultra fish bun in 3000. It's so cool. I'm gonna not hit him on the first part here because then I can get six hits in before he starts jumping around randomly through the room. Now he's gonna jump around randomly to zoom, but I can also start tanking hits from as soon as, soon as the oops as, as soon as the rotating that that thing comes out the rotating moving dumbbell I can just start tanking hits instead. Don't do drugs, kids. Good grief, that guy was tough. And now we get a like. This chest is pretty cool because it gives you a like, gallery for like concept art and random stuff and I like it a lot. Uh, so yeah, uh, now we have, oh also now we find out that Ital is a girl, coolest girl ever. Wait Ital you're a girl, see, revelation. So yeah now we just run back, take the raft thing and then we're done. Walking. Thirty-four, thirty-five, seven. No, it's more than that. Oh, I hit that thing. Thirty-five, fifteen. Okay, fifteen. I'm guessing that's the time. Uh, timer soon. I'm gonna say. And time. 41. I don't know if that's good, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> best outro song in any game ever coming up. So a 35 something run in game time, that's pretty good. I really like this song. So yeah, that's it'll do 100% specifically. Try this game, run this game, run 100%, race me, because I want to race people in this. Also, this would make a good bingo game, so someone get on that. I won't. Alright, stuff. Alright, that was it'll do. And next up, as you can see in the screen, is Mystical Ninja Staring Gammon. Where we will also have a sing along for the impact theme, which is going to be pretty glorious. Please donate to the Doctors Without Borders. Every dollar helps.
also be hyped for the impact beam sing along. It is going to be beautiful. Swa 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 swa. The first part of the game is pretty much the 90% route, which I'm sure everyone watching is, watching is familiar with. So we're gonna start with the portal wand. So here's the item merchant. He's called Item Carver. And he carved this whole item with his bare hands. Especially the swordfish. Uh, so he doesn't actually have the items. He says he does, and then he, we buy it from him and he sends us to the place where the item is. And these are basically dungeons. So this is the Portal 1 dungeon, which is the first one. Um, so you go a bit through the dungeons and you're gonna get the item eventually, and then you're gonna start facing puzzles that are based on the item. Now you can collect any of these for any percent, or like complete in the game in general. You can collect any of these items in any order, and you can you only need two of them to complete the game, which makes this a very open-ended game because depending on which items you collect in which order you will go through the main castle in you can go through it in many 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 different routes which made this game very fun to route like speedrun wise to find the optimal route now I'm, I'm just talking and doing these puzzles by autopilot so yeah that's a thing okay yeah, so we're gonna come up on the first boss here soon. Every dungeon has a boss that is often weak to its own magic. So we're gonna utilize that. And 228 here is fine. So now we're gonna meet the deer Jenny. All these enemies, the, the like humanoids or whatever, are called Jennies. And she's extremely magic right now. And this boss is pretty boring. To be honest, you just wait a lot. Because you have to. So, this is how the portal one works. You place a block, you shoot a thing, and the thing is teleported to the block. So, you basically place a block behind her, shoot her thing, and watch her get damaged by the thing. And then you wait. So, we're just gonna wait. Just, yeah. We seem to have technical difficulties. Hang on. <laughs> the ripoff. Cool. And I'm not gonna blame you. It is very like, um, it's a. I often call it a mix between a link to the past and Goof Troop for Super Nintendo. Because it's like top down hit things with swords and block puzzles that's the whole game um, so yeah this game consists of collecting items of sorts and to complete the game you need two out of three available items on the island the three items are the portal wand the fire sword and the ice wand now this is a hundred percent so we're gonna collect all the items all the heart pieces and all the fluff collectibles in the game, so you're gonna get to see most things. Now, I'm gonna run around this castle, meet some interesting people, hit some chests, collect money so I can buy these items of the item merchant. And, uh,
Bla bla bla. Oh shit. <laughs> By the way, is it okay if I have the in-game timer on? Like, there's a timer in the game that I can watch, like, it's for references and stuff. Uh, yeah, I guess. Alright. Hello everyone, this is... It'll Do. A nice little adventure puzzle game made by a local studio here in Skövde. So this game, a lot of people think when they see this game, they say, oh, 